Hello everyone and welcome to a discussion about SUSY, which is a proposed low earth orbit spacecraft from Ariane Group. SUSY stands for Smart Upper Stage for Innovative Exploration. It is meant to carry four to five crew and it has a cargo bay. And this is a model I have made of it in order to examine it in closer detail. Now, different renderings of it sort of have it looking a little bit more stretched out or a little bit more squat. I've sort of tried to make it as realistic as possible. I have uh, done the reverse of poetic license, I guess, uh, or artistic license, and I've had to figure out exactly how the RCS ports would be pointing uh, and you know what their functionality is, and uh, you know discover the details of the numbers. Uh, what they had said was it was 12 meters long, and I've assumed that that is from here to here, because otherwise none of the renderings make any sense. Um, they also said there was 5 meters in diameter, but it has to be more than that in order to fit the Ariane 6 rocket, because the Ariane 6 rocket is already 5 meters in diameter, and it has to be a little bit more than that based on the renderings. So I've made it look about the way it should be. They said that it was 25 tons. It is 25 tons, uh, you know, a little bit off, but about right. And it was supposed to carry seven tons of payload. And so in the payload bay, I have a seven ton payload or 6.994 tons. So that is what we have right now. It is a cute little thing. And I want to begin by dispelling some misconceptions about it. First of all, it has nothing to do with Starship. It is not, it is not a mini Starship. What it really is, is a mini dragon. And it is dragon if you put the trunk in the middle and turn it into a cargo bay. And so what we can see here is, if we can find a dragon in this list of uh, stuff, is basically it is a dragon pod. And then if I type dragon in here, so here's a dragon trunk. Uh, it's not looking exactly right, but you can see it's much smaller than this, which is the big catch here. And they're taking the propulsion elements from the Dragon, and instead of having the abort system in particular in front, they put it in the back. So Dragon has eight Super Draco engines in four pods in the top. Instead, uh, what we have here is, I don't know how many engines they'll have, but I've put four larger uh, abort engines in the tail here in the trunk section and the uh, propellant for them. There's plenty of room for propellant for this. Volume is not an issue. In fact, volume might be perhaps too much. And if we have any sort of mass problems, the first thing I would suggest is making the cargo bay smaller. Uh, so yeah, but uh, it certainly has plenty of volume for the fuel that it would need to do whatever. Now I've sized the engines specifically because they said they were abort engines, just like Dragon's uh, Super Dracos or the RS-68 modified ver engines on the CST-100. This sort of arrangement is more like CST-100 from Boeing. And basically I've sized them so that they have a thrust weight ratio of 4 when aborting with the full mass, the 25 tons. So that's set that there. Uh, they aren't very efficient in vacuum, not as efficient as the RCS thrusters anyway, because they are meant to be able to abort at sea level, so they are more midway optimized than the RCS thrusters. They get 240 seconds ISP at sea level, 305 in vacuum. The RCS thrusters are better. Uh, so mostly in space to be maneuvering with the RCS thrusters. I put a little hatch there. I made sure that a cockpit with four people would fit, but when you see the dragon capsule up next to it, that's that's probably pretty obvious that it would work out and maybe it should be smaller and uh, in terms of my model and it fits Ariane 6 a little bit differently than what it seemed like it would do in the renderings. It's possible that this model should be a little bit physically smaller and that the renderings were just sort of at an angle basically. And in that case, uh, I can make it smaller and maybe it'll be more sensible in terms of the kind of masses that we're looking at. But on the whole, it's a fairly reasonable. If we take out the fuel, it only, uh, it depends on how much they need for landing and how much payload they expect to be landing with. Right now I've put 2.5 tons-ish worth of fuel. Uh, well, actually uh, 2.8 tons of fuel here. And that cuts us 381 meters per second, which is uh, more than a lot of low Earth orbit spacecraft would carry. 
but again, it has to be able to land. So it might be a little bit less than what it should be carrying for landing as well. It's tough to say. Uh, it depends if we really wanted to do the propulsive landing. I'm not entirely wedded to the propulsive landing thing, but uh, yeah, maybe parachutes would just be better. But after we take the seven tons out, it's 15 tons dry here uh, without the fuel or the payload. And that's not too bad. Uh, if we think about the reasonability of the res, whatever you want to say, I don't know if I have the best version. But SpaceX's Starship is here, and it is supposed to be 100 tons. And that's with the engines in the back, and those are much larger engines than this. It's, this is a little bit deceptive, uh, but it's 9 meters in diameter compared to this thing's basically 6 meters in diameter is what I have it right now. And so, yeah. I think it's manageable. Of course, the, most of this is fuel tanks, but then the, most of this is actually just a completely empty cargo bay. So that helps. And the back end, it depends on how much fuel we actually have in there. Uh, one of the big problems with getting the mass right is actually the flaps. Uh, Ferrum Aerospace Research, which uh, manages the flaps here, uh, currently sets them to 0.3 tons apiece. And I've already uh, reduce that by using this mass strength multiplier. So they're pretty heavy. Uh, the abort engines are fairly heavy at 0.3 tons a piece as well, actually, as a matter of fact. So that's 1.2 tons worth of flaps and 1.2 tons worth of engines for the abort system. And that's not including the abort fuel, of course. Uh, presumably for a, an abort, uh, we'll be using much of the two, uh, sorry, 2.8 tons worth of fuel in order to abort and then some for the actual touchdown for the landing. There is also the landing gear system, which is another, I've got at 0.4 tons, we've got those. I have some tweaking to do before I release this pod, so you won't find it in the video description just yet. Uh, I need to add the hatch, uh, I mean there's a physical hatch here, but they need to be able to ingress and egress and I have to need to test that. And uh, some extra nodes need to be added. Uh, we need to test whether it actually works, so the first thing I want to do is take a look at the flaps, whether they actually move. So some of this is supposition on my part, figuring out how it's going to work. I deliberately didn't put the tiles the way they had them. They had heat shielding only on the front portion of the pod, and I don't know why. Uh, they have a black portion on the bottom end, and it only covers part of it. But really, it should be covering the whole bottom end if it wants to come back down at all. So I've extended the heat tiles here and they did have the flaps visibly heat protected. So, well, we've got pitch, we've got yaw. Yeah, um, here, that's clipping a little bit. So probably I need to limit that to like 15 degrees or something. You can sort of see why this needs to be sort of inset from where the flaps are. But anyway, the flaps seem to be actuating the way they are. As far as control is concerned, the pitch and yaw aren't going to be much of a problem with these huge things. And maybe making them smaller might save some mass, but uh, roll is a bit tricky. We do have a lot of RCS thrusters to help with that, but we don't have aerodynamic surfaces helping with the roll. But uh, presumably that won't be too much of a problem, hopefully, maybe. So, okay, let us take that back inside and put it on top of the Ariane 6 and see if we can get it to orbit. So this is how it fits on top of the Ariane 6 rocket. And again, maybe a little bit smaller would be doable, but not too much smaller than this. Let's face it, taking a look at how it is on top of the rocket. It is replacing the fairing. That's one benefit, uh, even if the rocket, the Ariane 64 in this case, the Ariane 6 with four boosters, uh, just carries 25 tons to lower Earth orbit. Uh, it doesn't have to carry the fairings, so that mass can be attributed to the spacecraft as well. And we'll talk more about the mass and sort of the history of SS spacecraft attempts uh, in a bit, but let's get started. The main sort of suspense here is actually whether I can deal with the second stage, which is a long-duration hydrogen-oxygen stage, and I'm just really bad at that. Uh, I have trouble sometimes. So here we have ignition. 
And then we'll be testing the RCS and such. I haven't incorporated the solar panels into Suzy yet. That's something I have yet to do. So that's another thing on the to-do list at this point. So here we go, we are launching from Kuru. So one catch is that it probably needs to go at some sort of inclination to get a space station, but uh, we will just go to a flat orbit out of Kuru for this try first. Now, I saw a video comparing it to Hermes, and it should be noted that it has many improvements over Hermes. The major problem with Hermes, as far as I was concerned, was the fact that Hermes had its an airlock in the tail. And it, the airlock was a separate disposable section, which is a waste, because the airlock is very expensive. And it was sort of acting like a service module with solar panels and everything, but it has to be pressurized and it has to allow crew to pass through, so it has to be crew safe. And that's a very expensive module to just uh, dump. So there's that, and making a separate pressurized section like that is very mass intensive. And in fact, for Hermes, the entire body would have to be pressurized because they have to pass through the entire body in order to get to that thing on the tail. And that's not great. In this case, it is not an entirely pressurized body. Uh, the cargo bay is unpressurized. Only the front end needs to be pressurized, just like a Dragon capsule would be. And that is a significant mass savings. Besides that, of course, there is no wing on this. Unlike Hermes, it has the wings and vertical stabilizer. This does have the flaps, but they're much less mass than a wing would be. And I think they ought to be much less mass than fair mirror space indicates for these right now. So those are benefits, the fact that this is not an entirely pressurized hull, and it doesn't have a disposable section on the tail, which is completely separate and would have to have it, that would require extra uh, sort of hatches because there's a hatch between the disposable section and the crude section and then another hatch uh, to on the end with the space station so that's a lot of extra okay separation now, I always have rule problems here because I think they must have rule control somehow but I don't have it here right now so, one of those peculiarities. I guess I could activate the RCS on the pod, but I'm just not going to do that right now. So, there's a fun part where I have to figure out how to get to orbit with these low thrust stages, but we will make do. Now, of course, uh, you might be able to find in my YouTube channel a video where I propose an improved Hermes. And that improved Hermes especially gets rid of the idea of having a uh, disposable uh, adapter section instead of incorporating everything into the same spacecraft. But I don't think that Hermes that I made had a cargo bay like this, and it was entirely pressurized because it was still sort of imitating the old Hermes, and it had wings and everything. It had a very unique launch escape system, if I do say so myself and probably this is better. I'm The propulsive landing thing, this is at basically the mass where it's a toss-up whether parachutes or propulsive landing would be a better idea. So it's tough to say. It really depends on the mass of the parachutes versus the mass of the fuel you need to propulsively land, so it is difficult. Even with parachutes you could land with landing legs on the surface. Maybe you could use a little bit of propellant to stop and stopping does add a little bit more complexity to the abort motors. We have abort motors here and I've compared them to uh, Super Dracos and RS-88s, but like the Super Dracos they will need to be able to throttle. And in particular I have them throttling to 40% here. That means that it can land with just two of them instead of all four. Abort needs all four because it needs the 4Gs that normally is the minimal required to have a launch escape system. Now, the fact that this doesn't have much thrust, maybe you could get away with less, I don't know. But then we've got the SRBs at the start. Now I'm not going to try and bring this back down just yet, and that's because the aerodynamics definitely need some tweaking.
uh, the center of mass and center of lift. I don't even know where they are right now. So that is going to be... Center of mass should be very obvious. Actually, the center of mass almost certainly has to be in the middle of the cargo bay between the two sets of RCS thrusters. That's why they place the RCS thrusters where they are. The center of mass must be here. Um, the center of lift, however, is an uh, interesting situation. The, because the pod itself will get some body lift, but Ferrum Aerospace is not going to read that. It only will read the flaps, which it knows about, and it's got those have the Ferrum Aerospace research module on them, but the pod does not. So how to balance that out is, uh, is the issue that will confront me while I'm trying to get this to re-enter properly. Tentatively, Delta VYs are looking good so far, but we need 12 minutes to burn the upper stage. And right now, I've got one minute to apoapsis, but our apoapsis is very high, and so we can go back down for a while. But trying to optimize that is a pain. So do tell me if you think it looks good or not, and if you think there are any issues. Obviously, we're assuming that the engines got a MH and Mon 3 very similar to Super Draco's or to the RS-88 derived engines on CST-100. They would have to be a little bit bigger than either uh, than the RS-88s in particular, um, but not too much bigger than that. I don't think the RS-88 derived engines are throttleable. I still have the Vinci engine with an extendable nozzle right now. I think they have abandoned that aspect of it. Another benefit to not having wings, of course, is that there isn't any aerodynamic issue with the launcher. You don't have to, like, add fins to the bottom of it. I don't think that would be necessary anyway, even if you had something like Hermes with wings, but you never know. This is certainly simpler to uh, deal with and verify since it is closer to the shape of the fairings. Okay, well, the trajectory was a little bit messed up. I should have allowed for more time to apoapsis initially. But we might still make it here. Alright, well, certainly can be done better than that. But... We can use the spacecraft's fuel to finish up orbit here. So, separation. Oh, it's flapping around a bit. Uh, Alright, I really need to stop that from deflecting too much. I have my usual placeholder cabin inside. It, well, it doesn't actually make sense considering the location of the hatch and the windows, unfortunately. So, while they have an IVA view, it's not the right IVA view. You can see this is for the normal space planes that I have with a forward view. The cargo bay door situation isn't the best. I've sort of got a little basically imagining a hinge there but it's not like the fully hinged doors that they showed or you would expect from the space shuttle so I sort of cheated on that to make it simpler for myself. Okay, approaching apoapsis now, and we will lift our orbit into a more proper orbit. Again, not using the abort engines, which would be too powerful. We will just use the RCS, as painful as that is. They weren't visible on anything, but I assumed four RCS thrusters back here, which seemed reasonable. They had four on the nose there. I assumed all four of those were pointing forward because they would otherwise be redundant with all the other RCS thrusters. This has a lot of RCS thrusters. Uh, many more than I feel are strictly necessary, but I guess they wanted redundancy. Alright, well, we are in orbit. And I will continue working on this, at least the basics work out. And... We will see if it can come back down in a future video. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.